like I said, the stress response works all or nothing. You can't choose whether it's active or not, but you can choose whether it is going to affect you long term or whether you let it deal with it quickly. So one of the things people often ask is when they're stressed, they feel like they can't get a snap out of it. It feels like everything's just on top of it. The reason that is, is because an area of your brain, the emotional center, basically normally allows us to choose to snap out of it. So there's a pathway in the brain that basically starts in the front of your brain and goes to the emotional center and basically tells you that snap out of it. But the longer you allow stress to continue in your life, the stronger that stress response becomes in your body. The more stronger the pathway becomes in your body and the more difficult it is to actually change the neural pathways in your brain. So it actually becomes harder for your brain to snap out of it the longer you allow it to be in stress. And so under chronic stress, it's almost impossible for you to actually snap out of it. And so one of the worst things to do to someone who's very, very stressed or who may be suffering depression is to say, why can't you just snap out of it? Snap out of it. Because number one, they can't. And number two, it doesn't actually help them one bit. So the solution then is to create neuroplasticity or relay the pathways that create joy, pleasure. Okay? And one of the most essential ways of doing that is movement. Serotonin, dopamine, um, what's the other one? Endorphins, okay, they're all released with movement. As Dr. Chestnut has told us on the weekend, we're essentially all dopamine addicts. Who's not heard of dopamine? Hand up. Dopamine is basically the, the hormone in the brain that tells you whether you enjoy it. Okay? Now, when you eat a bar of chocolate, at the time you, you get a dopamine hit, but afterwards the dopamine's gone and you feel guilty. That's how significant dopamine is. If you do things that you love and you're passionate about, dopamine is released and stays slowly released. When you do things that you feel guilty about, dopamine is just completely gone. One of the fastest ways to trigger dopamine and serotonin and all those kind of stuff is by movement, not drugs. There's a clear research paper out there that showed that if they gave depressed individuals, even though stress is not <coughs> depression, but just to show you how powerful it is, drugs to get out of depression, and they gave one group just exercise and one group exercise and drugs, hands down, the people that did only exercise responded way better, even better than drugs and exercise. See, the problem when you take medicine or drugs, and there may be situations where you need this, okay, if you don't have the strategies in place to drop out of stressful events, you need these medications, I guess, but they're not natural for your body to be taking. Okay? You, you, you're not born to take depression or stress-related anxiety pills. See, drugs cause brigand problems because if you, for example, because you'll know what this does, if you inject the testosterone in the testes, okay, what actually happens is the testes thinks that testosterone is really high. So the testes shut down. So the drugs actually, when you take artificial dopamine, the natural pathways to create dopamine are eliminated. So you're on these drugs almost for life. And that's why I see so many patients come to my office mention that they're on depression tablets, but they're still feeling depressed. Because they haven't changed anything in their environment. They haven't taken away the stressful response. They haven't, taken it, they haven't changed anything in their life. Drugs artificially reduce the innate response to stress and only cause the body to further increase the release of stress hormones. Then another drug is needed for the cycle, okay? Because what happens, you take one drug, it has an effect, but it also has a side effect. And that side effect after a while needs another drug to deal with that effect, which has a side effect. I'm gonna show you a slide in a sec that, it's kind of funny, but it's not. Oh, no, I know. Yeah. We need to teach you how to change your state. Now, Anthony Robbins is really big on jumping up and down and going, you know, get movement because movement changes your state. You can't be down if you're going, woohoo, you know, you just can't. It, it just clashes with our body. As soon as we start to move, we start feeling alive. You know, you get that feeling when you go into the gym, you go, oh, I don't want to, but afterwards you're going like, oh, yeah, I'm glad I went, you know. And it's because you get this rush. So let's go through the shirt. It's on... I, Forget where I found it, but I think Facebook. 
I take aspirin for the headache caused by the Zyrtec I take for the hay fever. I got from Relenza for the uneasy stomach for, from the Ritalin. I take for the short attention span caused by the Scopoderm TS. I take for the motion sickness I got from the Lodomil. I take for the diarrhea ca caused by the Xenical for the uncontrolled weight gain from the Paxil. I take for the anxiety from Zocor. I take for my high cholesterol. Because exercise, a good diet, and regular chiropractic care are just too much trouble. Okay? <laughs> now, that's pretty harsh. But at the same time, it's so true. We don't like human tragedy. We, we, we th it, you know, just because the, everyone is doing this doesn't make it normal. Okay? It's not normal for you to need these medications. There's a reason why your body created that need for the medication, I guess, uh, because you've neglected to look after yourself. When you were born, if all, everything went right, your body works perfectly. Babies generally don't get born fat. Okay, they get born chubby, but they're not born fat. But you're seeing much more and more kids getting fatter and fatter and fatter and starting these medications earlier. We'll talk about subluxations in a little bit. Let's talk about stress a little bit more. When you encounter a stressful environment, your body basically has to respond to it, and your body responds to it for a period of time. When you um, are at work, and you've constantly got a boss yelling in your ear, there are two choices that you will have to make at some point. Do I allow this to continue, or do I have to remove myself from this environment? Which would be a very tough decision to make. And the reason I picked that scenario is because too often we allow ourselves to be locked into a situation and stay there because we're too afraid for the change. And so when we do our time management goal management seminar, we'll actually teach you how you can get the confidence to change these environments as well. But for now, we're going to deal more with just the stress itself. Let's talk about subluxation. Where does subluxation fit in? Now, when I say subluxation is a reduced motion, how many hours are you sitting a day? Two, three, five, ten? You know, I guarantee it's probably more than four, okay? And maybe even as much as 10 if you include what, how much you sit around at home, not including work, okay? We don't move anymore. Our nation, our world just don't, doesn't move anymore. If you go to the na uh, native tribes, you don't see obesity, you don't see diabetes, you don't see these things. We just don't move anymore. And movement is, a, is an essential nutrient for the brain. You stop moving, the brain essentially starves. If you don't move, what happens to a casted arm? And you don't move it for six weeks. Muddle wasted, weakness, you know, the arm just doesn't look the same. Well, the same is happening inside your body to the spine, but also on a global level, you're not stimulating your body adequately. 